when the SA node is not generating proper electrical activity, the heart's atrial tissues or even other tissues of the heart will attempt to generate electrical action potential. This can cause issues by it not beating properly. So SVT is when a series of rapid heart beats that originate from the atria. It's like an umbrella term used to cover a whole different types of tachycardia. However, people also refer to it as SVT. Heartbeats can be inconsistent or consistent and are always fast. Two major types of SVT are atrial fib, PSVT, and atrial flutter. So here we have a strip. Again, really rapid. What causes it? A uh, patient can be genetically inclined to have it. can also be drug-induced. Uh, DIG and theophylin can cause it. However, certain behaviors like alcoholism, caffeine, drug use, smoking can also put the patient at risk. Some signs and symptoms of it include anxiety, shortness of breath, tachycardia, palpitations, dizziness, and syncope. So what could happen? People who have sustained can have adverse effects such as hypotension, as well as the heart can enlarge cardiomegaly and eventually fail. So how do you treat it? Because PSVT can be treated by the patients themselves, first line of treatment involves performing the Valsalver maneuver where the patient holds their breath and they bury down. Coughing while positioned sitting forward can also bring someone out of PSVT. I had one of those uh, frequent flyers, we called them in uh, ICU, and he came in every month or two and he would have PSVT not even realize it and uh, you know he would have, could have a normal sinus rhythm all of a sudden it goes into PSVT I'd walk in to see him and he would say yeah <laughs> I know he would uh, sit up cough a couple times and he would come out of it in the hospital a patient may get a carotid massage by the physician or medications like adenosine and cardioversion cardioversion you can look that up at uh it's used uh, quite a number of times. Atrial fib, uh, also called AFib, is the most common heart arrhythmia. The atria beat very fast, irregularly, and out of sync with the ventricles. The atria are often getting such confusion signal that they uh, quiver. So in other words, they're kind of like nervous. It's a nervous heart is, is what I like to call it. There could be three types. Proximal or early, usually when the patient is first diagnosed, the periods of atrial fib come and go, and they usually go away on their own. Persistent, you need medications to correct it. Uh, the patient will have longer and more frequent episodes of atrial fib, and you also have permanent or late atrial fib. They've had a long time in the heart, is really unable to even have a normal sinus rhythm. see uh, the waves are chaotic and random now uh, there's you know, there's really no rhyme or reason you have a QRS every now and then you have a lot of P waves in between the QRS's okay. you have little humps but it's hard to tell what's a P wave and what's not what causes it it's unknown, but there's some risk factors, age, history, smoking, hypertension, and obesity. Some conditions increase the risk, heart failure and diabetes, also coronary heart disease. What could happen due to pulling, basically your heart's not working, so you're getting incomplete contractions, so there's very likely to be a clot. So if the clot breaks free, it can cause a stroke or a pulmonary embolism, increases the risk of heart failure and death. A patient with AFib may not have any symptoms at all. About 60% don't. However, they can feel lightheaded, dizzy, short of breath, as well as experience chest pains. So how do you treat it? There's two goals. One is controlling the rate and the rhythm. The other one is preventing a stroke and the pulmonary embolism. Medications can be used to control the patient's rate and rhythm. The most
common used one is adenosine. The two most common used medications for rhythm control are cardiazem and cortisone. Cardiazem is better at controlling the rhythm but can cause hypotension, whereas amiodarone is better for uh, hemodynamically compromised patients. Anticoagulants, very important. Heparin is first line. However, Lovinox and Coumadin, or Warfarin, are also used. If the meds aren't successful, then the next uh, treatments would be cardioversion. Basically, you shock them to uh, restore electrical heart rhythm. Also, surgical ablation. Basically, they go in and burn the cells that may be causing an abnormal heart rate. Also, there's radio frequency ablation, and there's an atrial pacemaker. So the pacemaker would basically be put in to cause the heart to do regular beats. Atrial flutter, very similar to atrial fib, but atrial fib, the P waves have a very irregular rhythm, and atrial flutter. Uh, the heart still is beating regularly. The SA node sends electrical pulses through the atria. Sometimes the uh, impulse is so fast that it goes around the atria. The AV node receives this impulse and the combination of slowing down the rate as well as the intrinsic beat. So the beats, everything still beats at a regular rate. So you can see it here. Looks like a saw. Yeah, if you look at the Rhythm is regular. Yeah, the QRS complexes are regular. You just have the soft tooth pattern. Uh, I flutter on the EKG is one of the easiest. Just look for the saw. Regular, but fast. So atrial flutter, what causes it? Rheumatic or ischemic heart disease, heart failure, previous heart attack, pericarditis, septal defects, hypertension, uh, AV valve disease. There's also non-cardiac. Uh, conditions. You can have hyperthyroidism, diabetes, alcoholism, and alcohol splutter. VTAC, so when the SA node and the AV node are not pacing the heart correctly, the Purkinje fibers, the bundle of his take over. If you watch the other videos, you can see those are located in the ventricles. And unfortunately, this is the end of the road for pacing the heart, and the body cannot sustain life using the ventricles for very long so these are very dangerous rhythms so VTAC is a rapid heartbeat above 100 beats per minute originating in the ventricles it's defined as three or more PVCs in a row and can lead to VFib this is one of the shockable rhythms the other is VFib there are two types monomorphic caresses are the same also polymorphic, they're different size and shape. Okay, so you can see, yep, rhythm is regular, but the rate is very fast. QRS is really wide, and P waves can be difficult to identify. So there's a P wave, there might be one, very difficult, kind of look like on the edge there. There's one, okay, very, very difficult to... VTAC can occur in patients who have heart disease, such as cardiomyopathy, heart failure, surgery, myocarditis, valvular heart disease. It can also be present due to abnormal blood conditions, such as hypokalemia, pH change, and hypoxia. So what happens? Patient in VTAC could be asymptomatic, however. They can also be dizzy, lightheaded, palpitation, shortness of breath, chest pain, loss of consciousness. <clears throat> a lot of times I'll say, my heart is beating out of my chest. If left untreated, VTAC can cause sudden cardiac death. How do you treat it? The immediate goal is to slow the heart rate. This is managed through medication, usually lidocaine, but also procainamide, Sotalol or amiodarone, DFib, and possible uh, CPR.
chronic long-term VTAC is treated with a cardiac defibrillator or cardioverter defibrillator, just like a pacemaker they put in, is, except it's a defibrillator. Pretty cool. VFib uh, is the most serious cardiac rhythm. Untreated VTAC leads to VFib. Basically, in VFib, your heart's not beating at all. It's just quivering. Fib is just irregular, chaotic, you know, looks almost like someone is, you know, drawing or something. Whereas VTAC, you had the high complexes. VFib, you're starting to flatten out, and unfortunately, you think what is next after this will be asystole where there was nothing. What causes it? Uh, QNMI, trauma, drug overdose. Uh, VTAC also becomes VFib if it's not treated. Electrolyte imbalances can cause it because our muscles, the heart is a muscle, uses calcium and potassium to contract and magnesium to relax. So if you didn't have, if they were deficient in magnesium, the heart would just be contracting all the time, quivering. Your patient will likely lose consciousness and they will not have a pulse. VFib needs to be recognized and treated immediately because it can lead to cardiac arrest and death. So how do you treat it? Call a code blue, grab the crash cart, get on the patient's chest. With VFib it is super important to defibrillate as soon as possible. So you go to this website here. We'll include that in the notes. An awesome website when you're learning these things. So this site. So let's see. Let's say you have a VFib and it's pulseless or a VTAC algorithm. Let's say you have an A. You don't have an AED. Let's pretend. So if you click this. And you see the steps here. Just follow them. Okay, if you did have an AED, so that's what you would do if you had an AED. Okay, ABCDs. Okay, so make sure that you review those. And also, this website, you can go to, and it has uh, rhythm strips that you can take, uh, practice ECGs, okay, very, 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 this is cool because you can look at these strips and like you would look at that and say okay this is what it is describe it and then you have the example or the uh, assessment again very very cool tons of tons of examples there so again i know it went fast the cool thing about videos is that you can watch it again Hopefully it's helped. If you like it, let us know in the comments. Uh, this is Tim, and I uh, hope you have an awesome day.